So we see lots of hominins at certain points uh, in our evolutionary past that are living at the same time. So we will be comparing or thinking about which of these hominins likely depended more on tools and material culture for promoting adaptive success and behavioral flexibility. So what this is saying is um, a lot of Australopithecines died out and who survived? And is this probably likely due to their tool use and being able to adapt because of that? So Homo habilis lived around two and a half million years ago to 1.8 million years ago, but perhaps as early as three million years ago. With this species, we see the increased use of material culture, which basically means stone tools, and a larger brain, an average size of 650 cc's, although is, there is variation. We see smaller teeth than the previous Australopithecines, but an Australopithecus-like body. One example is this uh, specimen called Twiggy. You will see that often these fossils have nicknames. So the uh, catalog name would be OH24, but the nickname is Twiggy. It was found, or she was found, in Tanzania, 100, or dating to 1.8 million years ago. She had a larger brain and less protruding face than Australopithecines. Here's another specimen, a lower jaw called OH7, also found in Tanzania, dating to 1.75 million years ago. Here's a nice cranium, a nice specimen here, KNM-ER 1813, found in Kenya dating to 1.9 million years ago. The brain capacity was 510, which is so much smaller than other Homo habilis specimens. Here we can see this post-orbital constriction that is behind the eye sockets there. You will see kind of a squishing or pinching, almost like if you pinched this individual behind the eyes, you would see that kind of small area behind the eye sockets that's constricted. That's just kind of evidence of the smaller brain size. Low forehead, kind of protruding back of the head, somewhat of a flat face. So Homo habilis was found on the eastern side of Kenya's Lake Turkana, or the specimens that are found there are often called Homo rudolfensis. So this is just another variation. Uh, we may have talked in this class before about lumpers and splitters. Those who like to split uh, groups into different categories or species call some of these specimens Homo rudolfensis and some of them Homo habilis. Uh, most likely these days, more often, I see people or textbooks just calling them all Homo habilis. But if you're reading in the textbook and you see a reference to Homo rudolfensis, this is what they're talking about. And these specimens are somewhat bigger than Homo habilis, also have bigger brains and smaller faces than Australopithecus. This specimen is 1.9 million years old. So what was Homo habilis like? Their adaptations were walking bipedally, but still having shorter legs, similar to Australopithecus. One more complete skeleton of Homo habilis shows that this, us that this species was similar in height to Australopithecines. So Homo habilis had a shorter stride and likely had a more primitive, slower form of bipedality than the later species coming after it. But its skull and teeth were different from Australopithecines. The fossil skull and teeth of Homo habilis revealed that it had a larger brain, smaller chewing muscles, and smaller teeth than did earlier and contemporary hominins, the Australopithecines. So many of these later Australopithecines lived at the same time as Homo habilis, but Homo habilis had different skull and teeth features. Tool making and tool use were likely more important in Homo habilis's evolution, with tools more common than at, at Homo habilis sites than at Australopithecine sites. Homo habilis' expanding brain size also indicates that it was more intelligent. Despite the fact that there are now known tools associated with Australopithecines, tools are much more common at Homo habilis sites. We talked about that earlier. Uh, with the end of the last lesson, we're seeing more, some clues here and there that some Australopithecines may have used tools. However, we see them more commonly at Homo habilis sites. 
And this goes back to the Homo habilis uh, name meaning. It means handyman, so tool user. Their expanding brain size also indicates that they are more intelligent, as I said. The fossil and artifact evidence indicate that Homo habilis became reliant on intelligence, tool making, and tool use as central means of adaptation. As we've learned, climatologists, geologists, and paleoanthropologists can reconstruct climates. Studies of East and South African landscapes at two and a half million years ago provide some insights into what might have been happening in Homo habilis's adaptive shifts. Around two and a half million years ago, glacial cycles began to become more severe. Warm season grasses were spreading, and tools helped Homo habilis get a wider range of tools or foods. <laughs> tools helped him get more foods in this diverse landscape. 